Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are talking about uh, resveratrol again. Uh, in the last video we talked about uh, its health benefits in, uh, for example, cardiovascular system, in uh, sugar control. And uh, in this video we will talk about its cancer application, as it's a very um, popular substance in um, cancer patients nowadays. Again, resveratrol is a naturally occurring polyphenol that is found in grapes, in uh, wine, red wine, in berries, in peanuts, and it was extensively studied for its anti-cancer properties. Preclinical research shows a lot of benefits, and we have uh, already some clinical research, human studies. Since 2004, there are a lot of uh, human trials with resveratrol, with more than um, 6,000 participants receiving resveratrol in various doses up to 1 gram per day. These uh, trials span multiple types of cancer, starting from uh, colorectal, prostate, breast cancer, and ending with uh, pancreatic cancer and uh, hematologic malignancies like leukemia, lymphoma. So, let's talk in more details in, about uh, all these uh, types of cancer. Colorectal cancer. A study administering resveratrol half to one gram per day to colorectal cancer patients found um, detectable levels of resveratrol in uh, uh, cancer patients and its metabolites comparable to effective concentrations in preclinical uh, trials models. Um, the proliferation marker, uh, CHI-67, uh, it shows how fast and how many cells uh, divide, how fast the tumor is growing, decreased slightly but not uh, statistically significantly and didn't show any significant tumor regression. But it has some adjuvant potential, meaning uh, it can be added. For example, resveratrol may enhance chemo sensitivity in the colorectal cancer, especially to 5 fluorouracil or oxaliplatin. There is an interesting trial ongoing nowadays. It's called the ColoPrevent trial. Uh, it's a, um, it evaluates a resveratrol of low and high doses for preventing bowel polyps in high-risk patients uh, after colonoscopy. For example, they had uh, polyps, uh, dangerous polyps removal, and uh, after one year we will see if uh, they will grow again. And there are some patients receiving placebo and the others receiving resveratrol. Because resveratrol can uh, inhibit uh, the inflammation, and uh, we know that inflammation, chronic inflammation, is the trigger of um, cancer. cancer but uh, it's still ongoing, we don't have results yet. In prostate cancer we have mixed results. Uh, one trial found no significant effect on PSA or prostate volume. Another study using uh, uh, grape extract rich in resveratrol reported a non-significant delay in PSA doubling time, uh, PSA growth uh, velocity, suggesting a possible role in showing uh, biochemical recurrence. A 2022 uh, phase 2 trial uh, tested uh, resveratrol 500 mg per day uh, together with letrozole in uh, hormonally sensitive breast cancer. And uh, again, results showed non-statistically significant uh, reduction in uh, uh, tumor growth, uh, again CHI-67, uh, but uh, improved estrogen um, meta metabolism markers. Also, the, the, the sample size was quite small, 45 participants, and it was quite short, only 3 months. Resveratrol exhibits weak phytoestrogenal activity. Uh, it can act as an activator or blocker of uh, estrogen receptors, uh, hormonal receptors. This may influence uh, the hormonally sensitive breast cancer progression. Even we don't have enough uh, clinical data nowadays. In combination with, uh, for example, tamoxifen, it can uh, improve its uh, effectiveness by modulating SIRT1 and NFKB pathways. There are some ongoing clinical trials of 2025. They combine resveratrol with peclitaxel. Uh, this is chemotherapy in uh, metastatic 
triple negative breast cancer because preliminary data suggests that it can uh, enhance uh, the apoptosis of tumor cells, self-killing, and ferroptosis, uh, the iron-dependent killing of the cells. As I talked before in the separate video on ferroptosis as the novel approach to uh, heat cancer, and this can help to overcome tumor chemo resistance. What about pancreatic cancer? A uh, recent study highlighted resveratrol's ability to reduce uh, sleeping uh, cancer-associated fibroblasts uh, and uh, inhibit uh, the um, pro-tumorogenic cytokine uh, secretion. Uh, in easy words, tumors have their microenvironment, they make the microenvironment to uh, surroundings to protect themselves from chemotherapy, from radiation therapy and from uh, our immunity. Uh, and uh, that's very important to struggle and uh, disrupt this microenvironment, protective. Uh, and uh, here we can see that uh, resveratrol has some action on this microenvironment. Also, it doesn't uh, cause any direct tumor regression, but this effect may enhance it, uh, its um, chemotherapy sensitivity. So the other treatment may work better. The other trial combined 5 mg of resveratrol per day with uh, gemcitabine, it's a chemotherapy drug, and uh, it showed that this combination reduced uh, oncomarker CA199, but showed uh, no survival benefit, unfortunately. Uh, only gemcitabine and only resveratrol, most likely it's not enough combination, or maybe resveratrol was too low dose half a gram per day. In leukemia, resveratrol one gram per day reduced lymphocyte counts in CLL, but did not hold disease progression. What about bioavailability? We know that resveratrol undergoes rapid metabolism in liver. Only 1% will reach the systemic circulation, and even less will reach the tumor. In 2017, they did a trial uh, one uh, gram of resveratrol per day, uh, taken orally, showed that resveratrol was detected in uh, breast uh, tissue. That means it still can uh, achieve the tumor site. The concentration of resveratrol in blood, uh, a maximum at uh, one or two hours after intake, but declines very rapidly due to its inactivation. That's why they are making different nano particles and uh, uh, try to combine it, uh, combine it with bioenhancers like piperine, the same as uh, in curcumin. Uh, next, uh, here you can see that gold, gold nanoparticles are more effective than just resveratrol alone uh, in um, affecting the tumor cells. Low doses, less than 150 milligrams per day, may even protect tumors from uh, destruction that uh, promotes tumor growth. That's why uh, low doses of resveratrol should not be used in cancer patients, but high doses, up to one gram or even more, uh, can be pro-inflammatory, pro-oxidant, I mean, pro-oxidant, like with vitamin C. That's why nowadays uh, what we have, uh, the knowledge that we have, uh, tells us that um, cancer patients, if they decide to take resveratrol, they should take it in higher doses. One gram or even more. Also, combinations with targeted therapy or immune therapy may be interesting. Because, as we talked uh, before, it can affect the tumor microenvironment and potentially uh, make the tumor more vulnerable to our treatment and to our immunity. While resveratrol is safe and uh, well tolerated, uh, up to one gram per day at least. Uh, its uh, clinical anti-cancer activity is uh, still unproven. Current evidence suggests its potential as adjuvant, uh, as adjunctive therapy, particularly in uh, modulating tumor microenvironment and increasing its sensitivity to treatment, to chemotherapy. We still need more large trials to prove that. As monotherapy, it's not effective, only combinations, and low doses may promote cancer instead of fighting with it. So, dear friends, that's all for today. Thank you for listening, thank you for sharing this video, and uh, thanks for your comments. And, of course, thanks to everyone who supports this channel. 
I wish you good luck, God bless you, goodbye. Don't be afraid.